We want to th determine the time it takes an object to fall against gravity. So we're going to make a cantilever go out here and uh, drop an object off of that cantilevered surface. Uh, that object is going to start a distance s above the ground. Okay, We're going to then uh, drop this cantilever and watch the object fall and uh, solve for the motion. This is a standard kinematics problem, so we're going to say that this uh, is the zero of the y-axis. We're going to let the y-axis be positive in that direction. Here's the zero for y. So that says that the acceleration in the y direction is plus g, plus because we're measuring downward as positive. So that says that dv sub y times dt is g. That says dv is g times dt. Integrate this integrate that, g is a constant comes out, that says v minus v0 is g times t, that says v, which is d, oops, whoops, dy dt, uh, equals v0 plus g times t, that says that dy is v0 plus g times t times dt, Integrate this, integrate this. That says y minus y0 is v0 times t plus 1 half gt squared. Uh, this is, we're going to take to be 0, and we're going to drop it from rest, so that's 0. So that says y uh, at the end, which is s, is 1 half gt squared. So... Uh, that's the relationship we want to verify in this measurement. And from that, then we can get a value of G. Here's the FIFOX app, an amazing piece of software by Dr. Sebastian Stocks and his colleagues at Aachen University. This is running on an iPad, on an iPhone. These columns will be single column, a single column vertically arranged. Here it's running on an iPad. Uh, there are six categories of pieces of software inside the FIFOX app. There are three sets of experiments in acoustics, everyday life, and mechanics. These are the ones we will be using. And uh, also access to the raw sensors up here. I encourage you to play with those. You can export the data or you can just play with the real-time displays. Uh, we'll be using the acoustic stopwatch, which are in the set of timers and in the set of tools down here. Uh, fast Fourier transform spectra devices, mag magnetic rulers, and magnetic spectrum. All kinds of gadgets here to play with. Play with it some. Uh, let me show you one of the experiments. One we may do, uh, but we may do using the Sphero uh, sensors. Here's the centripetal acceleration one. For each of these experiments. There is a little uh, important set of uh, information up here in these three dots. If you click on this, there's information on the experiment. It gives you a brief description and leads you to a wiki and a video. Uh, very, very well done by Aachen. Uh, there's a way to export the data uh, in various formats. Uh, cancel. There is uh, how to run it. And for each one, there's a video, okay? Dr. Sebastian Stocks narrates what goes on here, so he does some of the work for me, not for the one I'm doing today. Uh, go back to VFOX here and back to VFOX here. The one I want to show you how to use today is the timer, the acoustic stopwatch, which is this one here. Uh, this is a, a stopwatch that starts and stops based on a noise. The only number you have to play with a little bit is the threshold in arbitrary units, the, the threshold of sound level which starts and stops the timer, okay? If it's set at this level here, 0.1, it takes a pretty loud noise to trigger it. Okay. I'm going to start this running now. So there it took a hand clap to start it. If I uh, reset it, if I set this to a lower number, 0.01, then it'll trigger on a much lower level signal. So you have to play with that level a little bit, depending on how noisy your room is. Otherwise, this thing works very well. You shouldn't have to mess with this minimum delay thing. That's for echo preventions if you ever 
you're working in a cavernous area with lots of echoes, you may have to set that. So here's the setup for the freefall experiment using FeeFox. FeeFox app, put it somewhere near where you're dropping. Here's a ruler to launch the, uh, the projectile. Convenient to look, stick it underneath something at a little, little pivot point and then start dropping things. And the question is, what do you drop? Well, you'd think that ideally you'd want to drop something, a perfect sphere, the ball bearing, okay? That means that the center of mass drops the same uh, distance that the point of contact drops. Well, that might be a good idea, uh, but it's not big enough to make a good noise signature. You might take an almost spherical rock. That's not so good. Turns out the best thing, I think, is a 25 cent piece, two bits. It works best. Uh, reproducible, we'll talk about the error associated with the thing. So you sit here and you just go like that and drop it. So you might worry about uh, the flat object versus the round object. Both, if both drop exactly like this, the center of mass and the point of contact change uh, is the same. If the quarter lands like this, it hits the ground one uh, half a diameter, a radius sooner, okay? But that's only one centimeter difference out of, if it's out of 50 centimeter drop, that's a 2% error. So uh, it turns out to be, I think this is the best one to use. Here's what the data looks like. I'll give you this blank table uh, in the handout that you'll be getting along with some words to go with that. Here is the distance S. Here is the time T here, the time for fall. And uh, this uh, curve here is the XL least squares fit to a power law formula that says S equals 4.889 T to the 2.039 power. So we know that S is one half g t squared so this number here 4.889 is one half g so uh, one half g equals 4.889 that says that g is uh, 9.78 meters per second squared almost too close to the accepted value, which is 9.81, <laughs> maybe serendipitous. Uh, but this is a pretty good re reproducible data, uh, not much uh, scattered in the data. If you do it carefully, throw out the really noisy hits where someone screams across the hall maybe at you. So anyway, uh, go out and start measuring some fall times, uh, different distances, and see what you think G should be in Greenville, South Carolina. Have fun.